Let's welcome Betty Toth from IPIT. Right. Can you hear me? Hi. Well, first of all, thanks for having us here. Uh, my name is Betty. I'm the co-founder of IPIT, the food ambassador. We match people with food based on their food preferences. Am I too short? <laughs> One out of 10 in this room will have diabetes in the next 15 years. Two kids in every school class have a deadly food allergy. One out of three in the US are obese. Some of us have to know what's in our food. And some of us want to know more and more what's in our food. And we want, we're craving sort of to be able to make better food choices and, and more informed food choices. So that's why we created Ipit the Food Ambassador. So what you do, you simply put, put in your food preferences, you just scan the barcode on, on your food product, and we will let you know if it's for you or not for you. If it's not for you, we have sort of an educational part where you can see why is this product not okay for me, dependent on the food preferences you already picked. And on top of it, as well, which ingredients uh, in that preference is not for you. And if you want to buy this for your kid and you pick those food preferences, you probably want to not do it as we're recommending, but we will give you an alternative product that better fits your food preference. You can, of course, compare nutrition values and so on, and as well rate the products to help out uh, your uh, similar people with similar food preferences. Today, we have 300,000 US food products in our database, and you know uh, it's a big task to find good product data, especially as we need the ingredients as well. Uh, we're constantly adding more and more products. We have our users helping us out as well. Uh, we have 15 uh, food preference live today. Everything from gluten-free, lactose, non-GMO, um, cellulose, corn syrup, and so on. And of course, we're working here as well to constantly add more. Hopefully, we could add like everything from Jamie Oliver's food preference or like a specific uh, uh, dietitian like Weight Watchers and so on. The CEO of Unilever once said that the power is in the hands of the consumer, and I think he's very right. I think, um, you know, the consumers are showing that um, they are looking for different type of products. And last year, the big food corps lost $4 billion in, in market shares. And, you know, they're struggling to be able to keep up that the, the demand from the consumers are, are increasing for better products. And the small uh, or more niche food uh, brands are having issues, you know, um, just to get out on the shelves uh, in the stores or to find the right type of um, uh, consumers as consumers' preferences are getting so much more niched and so on. So uh, we, I think, I mean, just imagine that how, as a consumer, if you have a special preference, how can that product really find you? Like, you know, in the store, you go like, you know, hey, sorry, over there, you can actually buy me. Uh, and that's what we believe that uh, we can help out with. So today we are collaborating with 10 uh, different food, food brands to figure out like how can this actually be done. I think the big sort of uh, part to figure out is like how do you get like, how do you work with Coca-Cola but still work with the small brands? Uh, because we do wanna have the big brands as well because we believe that creating a dialogue between the consumer and the brand is, is key to actually make a change. So, for example, it could look something like that, where you actually can, you know, get recipes or that the food brands can say a little bit more about the product. It could be that, hey, listen, we actually changed something here. 
uh, we listen to you, we, we remove the GMO and growing non-GMO, what's the time plan for it? And just have that in point of sales. So the competitive landscape, well, I think uh, in, in our case, I actually love our competitors because I think everyone who's trying to change the food system is, is something good. Uh, I think uh, our main competitors, are, of course, Food Okay and Shopwell who have point systems. Oh, I see the time, sorry. Uh, they do point systems. I think that's really great. It really simplifies for the consumers to easily make a better decision. At the same time, the problem with point systems, we think, is you know, if you remember like eggs four years ago, it was still super dangerous for us. It gave us heart attack and so on. Now eggs, we can eat as much eggs we, as we want. We believe that we should uh, uh, instead, we can integrate different point system, uh, but we're gonna put a little bit more um, on, on the consumer to pick that. Today we have 70,000 users, 75% uh, of them are women. They are still the ones who are shopping. Our users love us. We have four and a half uh, star on iTunes store. 35% is still coming back every two months and I use it from uh, the data downloaded. We have more than four million scans. You can imagine what type of data we're sitting on. If someone has X preference, what type of products are they scanning? What type of products uh, do they like? And so on. So the team. Uh, well, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our investors who are putting in money, but as well a lot of knowledge and expertise uh, and uh, Rest, the other part of the team, the, us who do, do the everyday uh, work, uh, we are more than the three of us, but our designers told us to keep it simple. So um, we, we have a background in everything from building apps back in early 2000 uh, and working with consumer products like Reebok, Nike, Ikea, Absolute Vodka, and so on. And we are not the perfect team. Uh, we do fail and we do fall, uh, but we stand up again and we undust because this is a big problem that needs to be solved and we just have to keep on moving. So if you think you can make our team the perfect team, please let us know. We're looking for partners, investors, brands, and food ambassadors. Thank you. All right, Betty, thank you. Questions for Ipit or Betty? You had a picture of Forager Juice, which is a co yes. juice company. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, because you had mentioned in your app that you say, uh, this is good for you, this is not good for you, how do you uh, deal with sugars, um, when the product is a natural whole food product as opposed to a sugar from a Coca-Cola or a corn syrup? Great question. Uh, so that's why we actually haven't released our sugar preference yet. Uh, we have it sort of done. Uh, at the same time, it's really, really hard. Where, where do we draw the line with the bad sugars like high fructose corn syrup and so on? And what is the right right type of sugar. So what we're gonna do right now is really divide it up. And that's where we, I would say, we differentiate ourselves a little bit. Instead of saying, you know, all sugars are bad, uh, we will, you know, make the sugar preference a little bit more complicated in some ways and say, okay, you can pick all sugars or you divide it up. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, does it work? Okay. Uh, thanks for your presentation. I have a very important question. What is uh, the business model? Well, for us, it's really, really important to have this have to be free for the consumers. And of course, there's nothing free. So it's really the, all the data we are collecting. Uh, and in that, in combination with helping the food brands to reach out to the consumers. Because we do believe, like, that how can we match brands with consumers as well. Uh, not all brands are bad, and even if they are, we still need to figure out that dialogue. Uh, that's the only way we can change it, and that's where we see the, the money, really. 
Thank cool. you. Thank you, Betty. Thanks. Epic.